I set out to get a firmer understanding of what it was like to live in Greene County back then, right now, and maybe get a glimpse of what it would be like in the future as a farmer. Along the way, I would meet people from all walks of life, learn about different lifestyles, and perhaps be immersed in the farming community around me. I traveled to the far corners of Greene County. I talked to farmers young and young at heart. And at the end, I hope I have a project worth watching with friends, family, and the world at large. I listened for hours talking with farmers, chefs, historians, business owners, and customers. I explored wineries, breweries, farms of all shapes, sizes, and operation styles. I traveled to the far reaches and boundaries of Green, discussed with neighbors of Green, explored the historical society, library, and old Green County newspaper records, or simply researched online. I wanted to find the past of Green County farming. I went on a journey. Now it is your turn to see a part of my journey. Hi, I'm Owen Godwald, the director, producer, and narrator of this documentary, Farming in Greene County, Past, Present, and Future. I am an 18-year-old homeschooled high school student, and I have lived in Greene for the majority of my life. This documentary is divided into three segments, the past, the present, and the future. And once you dive into the past, you find this man, William Monroe. And what makes him significant in a part of this story is not the way he lived, but the way he died. To learn about William Monroe, you look at the will of William Monroe. I, William Monroe, of the parish of St. Thomas in the county of Orange, being of present mind and sound memory, and calling to mind the uncertainty of human life, to make this my last will and testament. First, I commit my soul unto the hands of Almighty God, trusting in His mercy and in the merits of my Redeemer for the remission of all my sins. My body I commit to the earth to be buried at the discretion of my executors hereafter named, and as to my temporal state, I bequeath and dispose of in manner following. I give and bequeath to my daughter-in-law, Anne Harris, one negro slave named Betty, and her increase forever, to be delivered at the death of her mother if she should be long a sliver. I lend to my beloved wife, Frances Monroe, all my estate, consisting of negroes, horses, cattle, hogs, household furniture, and every individual part or parcel of my estate. There are two things we need to note about the will of William Monroe. The first is that the will was written in 1767, ten years before the U.S. was formed, and seventy years before the first census of Greene County was done. Second, William Monroe had slaves and used them as farm labor. Historian Thomas Johnson notes that slaves were primarily used for tobacco, as the tobacco worm were constantly having to be picked off. For order of importance, slaves are listed first in the will of William Monroe. Monroe also had horses, cattle, and hogs, but slaves are listed first. After finding the will of William Monroe, I hit a wall while researching Green's history. Green County was founded in 1838, and the will of William Monroe is only a bare-bones outline that documents how farmers lived and farmed. There are some random incidents thrown around before and after Monroe's will, but there are few and far between. Dorothy Smith, author of the book Recollections, a narrative of life in Green County in the 18th century, notes that there was corn shucking, barn raising, and apple butter making. There's this one instance where the kids keep adding water to the apple butter so that the festivities and the, the apple butter making continues to go longer because they're having so much fun. I don't know if the adults appreciated it, but the kids were having a blast. But beyond delicious apple butter making, there isn't much written down for information seeking historians. The problem is we don't have the past of Green County. 
There is a 130 year historical gap of silence from when Green was founded to when the first history of Green was written in 1970 by Thomas E. Johnson. There are small, random stories, but rarely do they touch on the history of Green County farming. We have raw data, but the stories that keep history alive are gone, vanished into the abyss of time. From 1900 to 2017, Green lost 582 farms. Roughly 87% of Green was farmland in 1900, while today only 27% is farmland. Green saw 60% loss of land over 120 years while simultaneously tripling in population size. I was just at the Green County Historical Museum and then the Green County Library. I got this. So my research is just that much closer to finding the full story on Green County farming. This is such a big project. I am getting a little bit stressed because it is so big. That's part of the fun of it. You know, I'm researching history and it's only 300 something odd years, you know, how hard could it be? But it was hard. Through technical difficulties and lack of time, I was only able to scratch the tip of the iceberg for Green County farming history. And while I was not able to showcase every farmer, chef, or historian I talked to, I did try to fairly show Green County farming. What community role do you play in Green County? Well, I mean, we, we try to be a, a, a good citizen and paying our taxes and permits and fees and, and uh, producing a certain level of employment in the community. Um, and we're trying to preserve this land in, in a, a, a farming venue and without uh, just selling it off, building houses, and, and making more of a, a load on the community. So we're trying to be a source uh, of food, income, and bringing dollars in versus just being a, a burden uh, on the community. Um, again, I think you might want to mention that to Martha and what um, they're really involved. I can speak to that they have a lot of um, my dad's on the EDA, the, the Economic Development Board, um, and he's also part of the um, Tourism Council. And my mom does a lot with uh, Watershed, and she was an educator for a very long time. And so they spend a lot of their time and energy within the communities that they've kind of created and um, kind of talking up agro-tourism and and I'd really love to see more of that in Green. I think that its name is Green County. Like, you know, like we have we have a really good opportunity and to kind of push that agenda forward and make it more profitable. Like we have a lot of tourism in Green. There's a lot of and making those things go hand in hand because that's what city people want to see. I don't know if I'm a community role or not, you know. Everybody knows me um, from a native of Green County, uh, you know, whether it be friends of my brothers, my sisters, my friends of my father, or grandmother, grandfather, you know, so everybody knows I'm, I'm a native, so what role I play, I don't know, I guess, you know, to a lot in Green County, they don't know the Pullet Man, but for those who are in Green County that grew up with me know that you can get chickens from Chris Morton, you know, or he'll have chickens or something like that. So that's kind of how I don't know if I have a really true impact. Or, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I, you know, I'm not the only one in Green County that sells chickens or has chickens. So yeah, I don't know what impact I have. 
I think also, I think we're integrated with our neighbors and we work a lot with our neighbors and on all sides. We have, we have a lot of neighbors touching our land because our land's kind of like a snaky, you know, uh -huh. and so, <laughs> so it touches a lot of people and we really, we work with most of our neighbors who are farmers and um, that, that is something that I think is important to be part of that larger community of farmers. From interviews dealing with community connections, it seemed like the vast majority of farmers I talked to were not working with each other. While this might not seem like a good thing at first, I soon realized that a major reason people become farmers in the first place is for the independent lifestyle and the flexibility that they can build within their schedule. Seeing the development, and you know, uh, that's that's the worst part of it. Seeing the development, uh, yeah, it's going to continue regardless. We have no control over that. But just seeing good farmland dwindle away, you know, good farmland dwindle away. It, it could be crops or something used to, to grow to, you know, for, for even people in Green County to, to to live on. You know. Well, Green County is. My understanding is the smallest county in the state. Uh, so there's certainly a room to grow. I think there's a way to do that that does not jeopardize uh, what I think would draw people to this area. The pristine the beauty, uh, the mountains, the rural farming community. Uh, I think there's plenty of room to grow. And for me as a local business, I would encourage that. I think we need a more dense population. And I think uh, people that are working on that are going to do their best in making sure it grows the right way. So we looked at that model and said, all right, this is going to be the solution. We needed, uh, we needed a certain number of members to make our budget. Um, we got about half that number of members to commit, and then we were in the season and we had to grow. And half of that, half of those members couldn't give us all the money up front, they had to give it to us monthly. So we didn't even get the upfront money to buy the supplies to do this. So we still had to borrow money to do that. Where do I see myself in five to ten years? I hope to be retired from the job that makes the real money <laughs> and actually spend a lot more time working on the farm. I got a lot of ideas and things, and I really, I, I mentioned previously that I enjoy the customer piece, but I also enjoy working on the farm. It's nice to be outside, um, working around, even in the humid, hot summers, it's kind of fun to be out here working on a lawnmower or, or doing something in the fields, getting outside, and I kind of enjoy that, and I hope to be able to continue to do that as I, you know, retire from my real job and, and, and actually put a little more effort into the farm and even get it, you know, spruced up and a little bit better. I've always and thought about doing a big, uh, would like a big, large community uh, garden, you know, where it's a garden where families could just drive in, participate in, in, in uh, the planting, harvesting, and, and marketing. But it would have to be, you know, large, you know. So, you know, when you came there, that on a daily basis, it would be, you know, force chickens for eggs, for families to get eggs, and families to, you know, to pick beans, and, uh, you know, just in a large scale. What my dream would be, would be trying to start a dairy, and that's going to be really difficult, but that's, that's my hope, um, and with my own land. Something happens, and, you know, I, I do require some help, and I, and I recognize that. Um, then unfortunately what we may have to do is uh, Tree Farm may have to, to fold. If I can't get someone to help me, and we'll put this back in a pasture originally and play with some cattle. So, but we'll keep farming. I hope to keep going it and get the help and because I enjoy it too much. 
I started this project in early August of 2019 for my senior research project as a homeschooler. From it, I gained a better perspective of Greene County and a deeper understanding of the variety of farming that has been practiced at Greene for the last 182 years. I hope that this short film will inspire future in-depth documentation of Greene's farming, past, present, and future. I only captured a fraction of the information in my search for Greens farming history. There are hours and hours of footage that I was not able to edit or review that could be a part of this documentary, yet, from the interviews that I did get to use, I am grateful for the opportunity to showcase a small piece of the bigger picture of farming in Green County. My name is Owen Godbold, and I am a homeschooled high school senior. Thank you.